Welcome to From His Heart, where Pastor Jeff Shreve is in an inspiring new series today entitled Land of the Giants, How to Deal with Your Biggest Problems. In today's lesson, he'll explore what may be the biggest problem that you have. It's called the giant of anger. If you have your Bible, please turn to Genesis chapter 4. Genesis chapter 4, we want to talk about the giant of anger. We're in a series called Land of the Giants, and today we're looking at the giant of anger. You know, I think if we're honest, all of us would say, hey, I've encountered the giant of anger. And the giant of anger is a tough, tough giant. We talked about Goliath last week, and maybe your Goliath, your, your main Goliath that you fight, maybe it is anger. You know, all of us deal with anger, but some, it's really, anger is really eating your lunch. I want you to take a little anger test with me to see if you might be an angry person. Do you have a quick temper? Do you, do you seem to go off very quickly? Do minor irritations cause you to lose it? I mean, things like traffic, things like the, the computer not working right, the printer getting jammed, going out to eat and spilling food on your shirt. Does that cause you to really blow a gasket? Do you tend to blame others for your outbursts? Well, it's my wife's fault, it's my husband's fault, it's my mom's fault, it's my uh, son's fault, it's my daughter's fault, it's my boss's fault. It's always someone else's fault. Do you find yourself in conflict with a lot of different people? You know, if you're having trouble in this area of life, trouble getting along with people at home, trouble getting along with people at work, trouble getting along with neighbors, trouble getting along with this person, that person, and the other person, Newsflash, it's not all these other people, it is you. You are the common denominator. Do you find it very difficult to forgive those who have hurt you? See, it could be that you are really dealing with the giant of anger, and maybe you haven't wanted to face that fact. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 9 says this, be not quick in your spirit to become angry, for anger lodges in the heart of fools. So here's our question. Do you understand the giant of anger, and do you understand and know how to defeat the giant of anger? Now, to help us understand, we're going to look at the first human being who was ever said to have been angry. His name was Cain. The Bible says this about him in Genesis chapter 4. Now the man, Adam, had relations with his wife Eve, and she conceived and gave birth to Cain. And she said, I have gotten a man-child with the help of the Lord. And again she gave birth to his brother Abel. And Abel was a keeper of flocks, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. Cain was a farmer. So it came about in the course of time that Cain brought an offering to the Lord of the fruit of the ground. And Abel on his part also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of their fat portions. And the Lord had regard for Abel and his offering, but for Cain and his offering he had no regard. So Cain became very angry and his countenance fell. He had a scowl on his face. Then the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry, and why has your countenance fallen? If you do well, will not your countenance be lifted up? And if you do not do well, sin is crouching at the door, and its desire is for you, but you must master it. 
And Cain told Abel, his brother, and it came about when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and killed him. The giant of anger. Notice with me three insights about this giant that we all face, the giant of anger. Insight number one, the giant of anger is not righteous indignation. You know, we read in the Bible about God getting angry. You know, God, he he gets angry over sin. He gets angry at injustice. He gets angry at unbelief. When God called Moses at the burning bush, you know, Moses didn't want to go. He kept saying he, he had all these excuses. And the scripture says that the anger of the Lord burned against Moses because he kept uh, trying to dodge God's plan for his life. Now, God, when he gets mad, it's called righteous indignation because God is righteous. He is holy, holy, holy. The Bible says in Psalm 7, verse 11, God is a fair judge, a righteous judge, a God who is angered by injustice every day. So God gets angry. Anger just by itself is not necessarily, well, that's always wrong because you should never get angry. Jesus got angry. Jesus cleansed the temple. He made a whip, and he uh, turned over the tables of the money changers, and he drove them out with a whip. He was angry, and he he had passion and zeal for his house. And he said, it is written, my father's house should be a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. He was angry. But the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 4, be angry and yet do not sin. And do not let the sun go down on your anger and do not give the devil an opportunity. The Lord always has righteous indignation. He's angry, but he doesn't ever sin because he's angry at sin, at injustice, at unbelief. We can get angry reading things in the paper or knowing that uh, this terrible thing happened, that terrible thing happened. You read about sex trafficking, and it just grieves your heart and can make you angry that these people are doing these terrible things. That's not a sin. Be angry, and yet do not sin, and don't let the sun go down on your anger, and don't give the devil a place. Because when you allow anger, unrighteous anger, like Cain had, when you allow that to have a place in your heart, and you respond in anger... It's like throwing a welcome mat out for the devil, and he will wreak havoc in your life. It's a horrible thing. That is the anger that we're talking about, the giant of anger, not uh, unrighteous indignation, but unrighteous sin that leads to disaster. Second insight. Where does the giant of anger come from? It comes from a desire for control. Really, when you boil it down, what is anger all about? It's a desire for control. I want you to do what I want you to do. My good friend and seminary preaching professor, Wayne McDill, has a great definition of anger. He says this, anger is the feeling of hostility and aggression in reaction to some circumstance or event that poses a threat to one's control. It can range from irritation to rage. It deals with the issue of authority. As we read the story of Cain, and Cain is the emphasis of Genesis chapter 4. His name is mentioned 16 times, twice as many times as Abel's name is mentioned. Second to the last book of the Bible in the book of Jude is still talking about Cain. First John chapter 3 talks about Cain being of the evil one, and he killed his brother, slew his brother. And Cain's situation, he is mad at God because God is not doing what Cain wants him to do. God is doing it God's way, and Cain wants God to do it Cain's way. Hey, when you come to God, you have to come God's way. Now, here's the heart of anger. The heart of anger is the heart of sin and the core of sin, and it's this, wanting to be in charge and have it your way. 
That was the sin of Adam and Eve. If you eat of this fruit, your eyes will be open and you'll be like God, knowing good and evil, and you won't need God. You won't have to depend upon God. You can be your own cheap tin God. And she said, that's what I want because I want to be in charge. I want to be captain of my own ship. I don't want to have to depend upon God. And sin is rooted in pride in the big eye, and anger is tied into that. Wanting to be in charge and have it your way. Now, God is in charge, and we have to trust his way. We have to go his way. Not just in, in the offering, but in life. Because, see, we get mad when things don't go the way we want them to go. We have this idea that, you know, when I get in the car and drive, everybody should do what I want them to do. You know, you ever get in the car and drive and, and you, you run across some driver that's going slow? You think, that idiot, he's, why is he going so slow? George Carlin, the comedian, used to say, have you ever noticed that when you're driving in the car, everyone who drives slower than you is an idiot and everyone who drives faster than you is crazy? I mean, that's what we do. That idiot's driving so, look at that crazy guy going so fast. Uh, but we, we feel like we ought to be able to control the road and, and control how everyone drives and control how everything works and, and control our kids and how they respond to everything. And, hey, we're not in control of much. God's in control of everything. And you choose God's way. You don't choose your own way. The giant of anger comes, for a desire, comes from a desire for control. And insight number three, the giant of anger is defeated when you choose God's grace over your control. Look at it again. Verse six. Then the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? And why has your countenance fallen? God is gentle with Cain. He's kind and merciful with Cain. He says, now when God asks Cain, why are you angry? God's not asking for information. The Lord never asks a question where he's trying to gain information. He knows everything. He knew exactly why Cain was angry. But he says, why are you angry, Cain? Why don't you start to uh, really consider this, Cain? Why are you so angry? Does it make sense for you to be so angry, Cain? Because I set up how you're supposed to come to me, and you're coming to worship me. Well, if you're going to come worship me, you better come my way. You can't come any old way. You can't come your way and expect me to rubber stamp that. God says, that doesn't make sense, does it? Why are you so angry? Why has your countenance fallen? And then he says in verse 7, if you do well, will not your countenance be lifted up? And if you do not do well... Take heed, sin is crouching at the door, and its desire is for you, but you must master it. Now, it's important to remember, God wants to help you with your anger. He wants to help me. He wants to help us as we deal with that giant of anger that pops up in our lives. As we think about anger... In the definition that Wayne McDill gave, anger is the feeling of hostility and aggression in reaction to some circumstance or event that poses a threat to one's control. So there's a circumstance or an event that triggers the anger, whether it's somebody cutting you off in traffic, whether it's your wife not leaving you any pizza, whether it's just something that triggers the outburst of anger. And so there's a progression with anger. Every angry person and every outburst of anger, it always starts with a hurt. There is first a hurt. There's something that happens to you, some event, some circumstance that hurts you some way, somehow. Whether it hurts you physically or it hurts you emotionally, it hurts you professionally, it hurts you in some way. And that hurt will always turn to anger. The flip side of the coin of hurt is anger. Every, every person that is angry and walking around angry, you can be sure that that person has been hurt in his or her life. They hurt by a dad, hurt by a mom, hurt by a boss, hurt by a coach, hurt by someone, hurt by a sibling, 
hurt by a drunk driver, whatever it might be. But there's a hurt there, and they, they, they trace it back. It's like, well, I got hurt. Now, Cain suffered the sting of rejection from God over his offering. There was hurt there, and that hurt turned to anger. Now, if you don't process the anger correctly, then the hurt goes to anger, goes to resentment and bitterness. That is the flow. And then when you allow bitterness to get in your heart, it's Katie bar the door, because when you start to resent a person or get bitter at a person, then you start to churn that and mull that over and you start to think of ways that that person could, you could hurt them back. Uh, you start plotting revenge and things like that. And that leads to disaster. God wants to help you process that. Cain, why are you angry and why is your countenance fallen? If you do well, will not your countenance be lifted up? So let's talk about doing well. See, God wants to help you with your anger. God wants you to do well with your anger so that you can have victory over your anger. So when the Lord says to Cain, if you do well, will not your countenance be lifted up? What does he mean by that? What does doing well look like? What was Cain supposed to do? Well, what Cain was supposed to do is the same thing you and I are supposed to do when we struggle with the giant of anger. Number one, we humble ourselves. Victory comes when you humble yourself. Cain was walking in pride. Cain was wanting my way. He was singing that Frank Sinatra song, I'll do it my way. And God says, no, you're not going to do it your way. I'm the king, and we do it my way. And so victory comes first step. You humble yourself before God, and you say, Lord, this isn't about my way. It's all about your way. You're the king, and I am uh, nothing. As the scripture says, all, all the nations are as nothing in his sight. They are regarded by him as nothing and less than meaningless and less than nothing. I mean, God is the great king of the universe. The audacity for Cain to try and tell God how things ought to be is just mind-blowing. But we do the very same thing when we want our way. Hey, the Scripture says, 1 Peter chapter 5, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you at the proper time, casting all your anxiety, your cares upon him, because he cares for you. So that's the first step in victory over the giant of anger. You humble yourself. Secondly, you confess your sin. Cain needed to humble himself before God. He needed to confess, God, I am angry with you, and I'm wrong to be angry with you because this isn't about Cain. Life isn't about Cain. Life is all about you, Lord. And I confess my sins. The Bible says if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And then thirdly, victory comes, now this is a hard one for lots of people, victory comes when you forgive from the heart. You forgive from the heart. You don't just forgive with lip service, you really forgive. Jesus said that in Matthew chapter 18, the great parable on forgiveness. And when he told the, the story about the, the servant who owed his master 10,000 talents, which is an, an amount that is far exceeds anything that anyone could comprehend in that day and age, and that master forgave, he released the servant of that debt, and then that servant went and found somebody else who owed him a pittance compared to what he owed the master, and he grabbed him by the throat and he threw him into jail. And he said, you're not going to get out of here till you pay the very last cent. And when the master heard what that servant had done, he brought him before him. He said, I had mercy on you, even though you owed me such a great debt, and you found a fellow servant who owed you a pittance in comparison, and you threw him into jail. And the Bible says that the master was moved with anger, and he threw that unrighteous servant into prison and he said, you're going to stay in there till you pay every last cent, which was impossible. And then Jesus said, thus shall my heavenly Father do to you if you don't forgive your brother from your heart. To really forgive. 
And that's hard for lots of people. Ada Ferguson, our counselor who's in heaven now, she used to talk about three words, sad, mad, bad. Some of you who saw Ada know that she would talk about that a lot, sad, mad, bad. And what she would say is this, sad, something happens to you that hurts you. And that sad always turns to mad because the, the other side of the coin with hurt is anger. So if you don't process your sad correctly, you're going to get mad. And then if you don't process the mad and bring that to the Lord and humble yourself and confess that to the Lord and get things right, then that mad turns to bad. And that's what happened to Cain. Hey, victory comes when you humble yourself, when you confess your sin, when you forgive from the heart, and when you go God's way. That, that's what God is giving Cain the opportunity. He said, Cain, listen, if you do well, will not your countenance be lifted up? All you have to do, Cain, is humble yourself and bring a blood sacrifice to me and offer that blood sacrifice to me, and I will accept you and your offering. you got to change your heart. You know, the, the sacrifice he brought revealed a rotten, prideful, sinful heart. So you got to change your heart. And if you do that, then I'll accept you and your countenance will be lifted up. But if you don't do it, let me tell you something, Cain, that you don't understand. Right on the other side of the door, there is sin, and it is crouching, and it is waiting like a lion, and it will devour you. Sin is crouching at the door, and its desire is for you, but you must master it. So God wants to help you with your anger. God wants you to deal well, to do well with your anger. And God wants you to master your anger so it doesn't master you. As we read the story, Cain didn't do what God told him to do. The Bible says in Jude chapter 1, verse 11, Woe to them, they've gone the way of Cain. The way of Cain is the way of woe. The way of Cain is I'm going to do it my way. And God, if you don't accept me, then you know what I'm going to do? Okay, God, you want a blood sacrifice? I'll give you a blood sacrifice. And he went and talked to his brother, Abel. And he lured Abel out into the field. And the Bible says in 1 John chapter 3, verse 12, that Cain, who was of the evil one, slew his brother Abel. Why? Because Cain's deeds were evil and his brothers were righteous. Now it says in 1 John 3, I learned this from my friend Josh Harrison. I thought it was such a great point. 1 John 3, it uses the word slew. He slew his brother Abel. That word slew literally means to butcher an animal sacrifice, to slit the throat of an animal sacrifice. And this shows Cain's heart. He says, God, you want a blood sacrifice? I'll give you a blood sacrifice. And he went out and slit the throat of his brother Abel and brought disaster into his life. That's what happens when anger is out of control. And you know, just like anything, we think that, oh, I got this under control. But unless you're going God's way with your anger, unless you're choosing his grace over your control, that anger is gonna one day take you down Sin is crouching at the door, and it's desirous for you, but you must master it. And you can start today. We've been talking about giants today, and the only way to be victorious over the giants that we face is to have the Lord Jesus Christ in our lives. He is the one who gives us the power. Now listen, if you're watching and you're not sure about your relationship with Jesus, maybe you just know about him, but you don't really know him in your heart, today is the day for you. Just pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I need you. I know that I'm a sinner and I'm lost and I can't save myself, but I believe that you are God in the flesh. I believe you died on the cross for my sins and rose again from the dead on the third day. I believe, Lord, that you'll save me if I'll cry out to you, and I do that right now. I turn from my sin, and I turn to you. Forgive me, be my Lord and Savior, and I promise to follow you all the days of my life. My friend, if you'll pray that kind of prayer and mean it, 
the Lord will come in and your life will never be the same. I would love to hear from you, to know that you're watching, to know that God is using this broadcast to make a difference in your life, to know that you just prayed that prayer to receive Christ as your Savior and Lord. Please take the time to call that toll-free number, write me, email me, let me know what's going on and how we can pray for you. You really are important to God and you're important to us and we're here for you. Today's message, The Giant of Anger, is available in multiple formats when you call 877-777-6171 or go online to fromhisheart.org. Hey, is your life filled with giants, internal and invisible giants that steal your peace and your joy and your confidence in the Lord? Do you struggle with anger and worry and insecurity, discontentment and lust and guilt? Well, you're not alone. But the good news is this, God has an answer for your giant battles. In the series, Land of the Giants, How to Deal with Your Biggest Problems, I'll share God's strategy for defeating the toughest of giants so that you can walk in daily victory. I believe this series will be a blessing to you, so I hope you'll request your copy today. Land of the Giants, How to Deal with Your Biggest Problems. It's our gift of thanks to you this month for your support to the outreach of From His Heart Ministries. It's available in multiple formats when you make your gift by calling 877-777-6171 or go online to fromhisheart.org. And thank you for supporting From His Heart Ministries that allows us to reach millions on TV and radio every week with real truth, love, and hope. And thank you for watching From His Heart today, the viewer-supported broadcast outreach of Dr. Jeff Shreve who believes that no matter how badly you may have messed up in life, God still loves you and has a wonderful plan for your life. Find out more. Go to fromhisheart.org. Real truth.